This is my free-to-play account showcase after nearly two years of playing Genshin Impact. I wanted to make this video because there's a lot of discourse online about whether Genshin is free-to-play friendly, and I wanted to show you what's achievable in two years' time if you're deliberate in your decisions and you know what you're doing. Now, there's also an element of luck that determines how easy it is to obtain characters and artifacts, but a lot of it comes down to how you invest your primo gems and how you invest your resin. To show you a brief summary of what I have achieved, I'm just going to show you my best ranked Akasha builds. So Akasha is a website where you can see how your characters stack up to other characters within your region. So I have a top 67 Ito. I have a top 2% Fischl, a top 2% Farina, a top 5% Xingqiu, a top 7% Shangling, a top 8% Wanderer, and a top 9% Yulon. Going into which characters I have and which characters I don't, as you can see, there's a lot of 5-star characters that I actually do not have because I deliberately skipped them. I'm someone who values vertical investment over horizontal investment, especially for free-to-play players because you're limited on Primo Gems, so it doesn't make sense to pull for every character and to collect them all because you literally can't do that unless you are the luckiest person in the world. I also don't think it's a good idea to level up every character you have because you don't have unlimited resin. So sure, you can try leveling them all up, but all of them will end up being half-assed in terms of how strong they feel. I'd much rather pick a select few units that I know I will play long term and then focus on those and then when new characters come out that synergize with them I'll pull a couple of them to then augment my teams over time so I started playing Genshin in 2.3 which was on Ito's release so this was December 2021 or en end of December 2021 and if you watched my insane Ito summon video, you would have known that I pulled both Ito and his signature weapon Redhorn within the first 10 pull. So because I know that I would be a long-term Ito main, the next character I decided on was Zhongli. And so I pulled Zhongli on January. After that, I didn't pull for anyone until Kazuha. So that was almost six months. And Kazuha let me build my second main abyss team, which was the national team, because this was pre Dendro. And so the easiest free to play teams at the time were Sucrose, Taser, or National. After that, I got Nahida in November. Nahida took over as the new free-to-play god unit because dendro teams are notorious for their low investment but high damage floor. So that means you don't have to spend a lot of resin and resources building these characters to clear the abyss. After Nahida is Wanderer. Wanderer I got in December. This was actually at the same time as Ito's first rerun and the reason I pulled for Wanderer is because if you've seen my Ito guide I mentioned that his early constellations aren't really worth in my opinion honestly all of his constellations aren't worth it until you get to c6 but if you're pulling for a c6 five star especially as a free-to-play player i personally believe that there are better options out there so i decided to pull for wanderer to get my goro copies because at this point my goro was still c1 and ironically I only managed Relax. to get two copies of Goro from this banner, <laughs> but I ended up with C6 Farazan. And so while pulling for a Wanderer, who is C0 by the way, I got seven copies of Farazan and only two copies of Goro, even though the whole point of this was to get Goro constellations. So anyways, my Goro is still C3, but I have C6 Farazan. I'm not complaining, it's just kind of funny. After Wanderer, I got Yelan. And the reason I picked up Yelan is because, one, she enables double Hydro, which is an incredibly strong duo. Xingqiu Yelan is incredibly powerful. But also because Wanderer Yelan 
make the best overworld duo ever. Both of them have insane mobility and incredible damage. Like just running these two units alone, you can like run any other two units on your team and they will just carry you in the overworld. I didn't pull for any other character until Farina. So what was that? February until November. And during that time, I racked up 500 wishes. And at first, I was just going for a Farina C2. But after reading what her C6 does, it literally turns her into the perfect character. If I could choose any C6 5 star in the game, I would probably still choose C6 Farina. I have no regrets. Since Farina, I have not pulled for any other character. I will be pulling for Kiori on the day this video releases and so if you want to see how that went i will upload those as well in summary i have 13 limited five star characters on my account including like this includes constellations i have won 10 50 50s and lost three obviously i think that is lucky but the character archive isn't even what i'm most proud of I have a bunch of 5 star weapons as well. Now I'm of the belief that 5 star weapon banners are not scams if you know what you're doing. Like I said in my Ito guide, if both weapons on the banner are useful to your account, for example at one point there is Aqua Simulacra and Staff of Homa. Both of those weapons are insanely good. Like if you got Homa you could put it on Shangling. If you got Aqua Simulacra, you could put it on Yelan. If you don't have Yelan, you could put it on literally any other bow character, and they would still love that bow. And then on top of that, if they have good 4-star weapons, like Favonius Bow, Favonius Sword, Favonius Lance, Sacrificial Sword, or um, Xyphos' Moonlight, the Wood Sith, even Stringless, like, if you have any of these weapons on the banner, it just makes it even better. Because a lot of the times, you would see guides recommend, like, Favonius weapons on supports. Because if your team revolves around needing energy, you can't beat these weapons on your supports. Because they make your team rotation so much more fluid. And if you don't pull on the weapon banner, it will be really, really hard to get copies of these. I ended up pulling a bunch on the weapon banner, and I don't regret it, even though I do have weapons that aren't being used by anyone. So technically, the Skyward Atlas is not being used because Hazel is not leveled up. Lo-Fi has no owner. The second Mist Splitter is also homeless. And Jade Cutter is currently homeless, but it will be going on Kyori when I get her. Skyward Spine is currently the only weapon that I do not have leveled up because I just can't find a home for it. Shang Ling would rather have the catch. Rosario would rather have Wavebreaker's Fin, especially if it's R5. Zhong Li does not need Skyward Spine. He'd rather have Favonius Lance. And there's literally no other polearm character that I currently have. So I don't really know who would use Skyward Spine. I think the only character in the game that actually doesn't mind it is Shen he, But I don't have Shen he and I don't really plan to get her anytime soon. So until I can find a place for this weapon, I will leave it at level 1. But I have leveled up every other weapon. And most of them are being used on characters that do appreciate it. Anyways, some of my weapons aren't being used, but it's always nice to have a spare mist splitter to give someone and a spare lo-fi and a spare jade cutter. Like, they're staple weapons. I could also do a weapon showcases. Like, I'd, I could have someone go between all of these different swords and then I can show the differences between them if I ever wanted to make that content. And so it's nice. Now that I'm done talking about my characters and weapons, I think it's time to show you some of the best builds that I have. So, like I said, my Ito is the best character that I have built. He is my main. I've been playing him for the longest time <laughs> since I started playing. I got him on day one. 
his top 1% build is on this artifact where he ends up with 99, 240, and 110 ER. He is on red horn with four piece husk. Now this is not the set that I run him on most of the time just because his ER is rather low and I personally prefer higher amounts of ER to enable consistent ultimates. And so instead of this piece, I actually rock this most of the time. And so that would actually lower my Ito to 95, 240, but would give him enough ER. Now he's at C0. I mentioned that his constellations are kind of meh. C6 is good, but I, if you're going to go for a C6 character, I would probably recommend someone else like Farina. And he's triple crown. The only triple crown character on my account. So next, Freena is top 1,958. She has 85, 237 with 140 ER. And on her signature weapon with four piece golden troop. Now I know with Freena C6, if you want to go for nuke builds, there are actually other artifact options that you can consider. Uh, I think namely two piece, two piece of hydro damage or stuff like the two piece Marasophie Hunter. You could also go four piece heart of death, I think, but I don't have a good set of this. So for now, I'm still leaving her on golden troop because most of the time I use Farina, it is actually to buff other characters. She is C6 with two crowns, double crowned. Her normal attack scales off of attack, and so leveling this up, while it does somewhat increase her damage output, it's barely noticeable. And so I haven't found the desire to level this up yet. Fischl is my next best character. She is ranked 2,521 in NA, so top 2% with an 81-90 split with 106 ER. She has an R2 Skyward Harp with 4-piece Golden Troop. She's C4. I really want C6 because C6 is crazy good for her. And she has a crown on Oz. Xingqiu is next, top 5%. 66, 135 with 205 ER. R5 Sacrificial Sword with 4 piece emblem. He is my first C6 4 star, I believe. No, Beidou was my first, he is my second. And he's double crowned as well. Then Sheng Ling is top 7%. She is 47, 135 with 210 ER, but she has 300 EM. She's rocking R5 the catch. Four piece emblem. She is C2. I have not activated this yet because um, this was from Lantern, right? And she has a crown on the Pyronado. Then Wanderer is top 8%. 88,190 with 126 ER. Lost Prayer with 4 piece Desert Chronicle. Okay, this piece is really bad. And when I get an upgrade to this, my Wanderer would probably shoot into the top 5%. <laughs> As you can see, there's no crit rate whatsoever, and there's 26 defense percent, but whatever. He's C0 with two crowns. I did not triple crown him because I want to distinguish that Ito is my main, but I do, I do enjoy him. Okay. Then I have Yelan, who is top 9%. 82, 200 with 180 ER. She has Aqua Simulacra, a four piece emblem. She is C0 
and she has a crown on her ultimate. So those are my best characters. Then I'll briefly go over other characters that I use. So I have Zongli. Zongli is on Favonius Lance R5. Four piece Noblesse. I will change this, but I'm too lazy at the moment. He is C0 with a crown on his E. Then I have Kazuha. Kazuha has an R3 Favonius sword with four piece VV. He is C0 and his talents are 668. Then I have Chi Chi. Chi Chi is rocking the Aquila Favonia with four piece clam. She's C1. I got one copy from the standard banner and then I lost a 50 50 to her. And she is 888. Then I have Kaching. She is at 70, 192 with 140 e EM. She has one of my Miss Splitters, which I believe looks really good on her. She has four piece Thundering Fury. She sees zero with 888 talents. Then I have Nahida, almost at 1000 EM. She has Sacrificial Fragments with four piece Deep Wood. She is C0 with 888 talents. Then I have Goro. Goro is on the Favonius Warbo R5, four piece husk, C3, with a crown on his skill. But I will only activate this once I get him to C6. Because he hasn't been C6 yet, I have punished him by not crowning this ability. Then I have Farzan. Farzan has 270 ER. She has a Favonius Warbo R1. Basically any spare copy I have. Like the only spare copy I have. Four piece emblem. C6. And a crown on her ultimate. Then I have Rosaria. A criminally underrated unit. Rosaria is crazy crazy strong. Especially when you get her to C2. I don't think she's worth building before C2, but once she's at C2, I really think she is one of the best 4-star characters in the game. She doesn't get enough credit. She's on uh, R5 Wave Breakers, 4-piece Emblem with C2 and 168. So I just uploaded a clear of Reverse Melt Rosaria, and I melted the abyss so quickly and this is with like a not even that highly invested rosaria also like i don't think i even played that team especially well i didn't even get like double swirls off so that team could do even better with more brain power and thought put into it i also have kuki kuki is merely a hyper bloom bot so i stack em she has iphos's moonlight four piece flop c2 and i kind of leveled up this for more healing then i have bennett bennett is rocking sapwood blade with four piece no plus c2 and a crown on the ultimate I also have Amber, which I use for Amber Burgeon teams, so I stack EM. <laughs> She's rocking Stringless, 4-piece Flower of Paradise Lost, and <laughs> honestly, you might be like, what the hell? But I got so many Amber Constellations, <laughs> it's kind of funny. They don't really mean anything, especially if you're, if you're playing Burgeon Amber, but it's still kind of funny to see how many Amber Constellations I have. And this is before the Chronicle banner. So, yeah, kind of lucky there. I got Tainari as well. Tainari is rocking my other Skyward Harp with two four piece Wanderers, C0, 816. Then I have Kaya. And I think at this point, the characters are. No longer as invested in. Yeah. All my characters, except for one, they're all friendship 10. 
So I have achieved friendship 10 on every single character on my account, except for Candice, who is at friendship level 9. Now in terms of map completion, in Mondstadt I have at least 90% in every region. In Liyue it's the same thing, at least 90%, oh, except for this one, in every region. In Inazuma, also at least 90% in every region. And then I'll dip into Enkonomiya as well. I'll also show you the Chasm for Liyue. Then if we go to Sumeru, also at least 90% in every region. Oh, except for the desert here. <laughs> and then in Fontaine as well, at least 90% in every region. I have not explored Chen Yu Vale as much, but I will be working on it. In terms of active quests, no I make it a point to try to have this empty. For story quests, I also finished all of these trying to get enough wishes for Farina C6. So I'm on top of that as well. Now for achievements, I have currently 971 achievements. I don't have every achievement in the game, but I haven't really specifically been achievement hunting yet. For my current Primo Gem stash, I have almost 2,000 Primo Gems, 13 fates here, 15 fates here. I still have the shop as well. As for who I'm saving for, I am pulling for Kiori. So you will be seeing this video on Kiori's release. I will be recording my summons for Kiori. So we'll see how that goes. After that, I may pull for Nivellet, but I'm probably going to skip him because I really, really want to guarantee Chlorind. 